Are you blessed and highly favored? Yes. Are you the head and not the tail? Yes. Above only and not beneath? Amen. That's what I'm talking about on today. Well, we have a treat for you guys. The um, drama team and I have been working on a little skit for you guys. And uh, we were actually supposed to do it last Sunday. But uh, something happened to where uh, it was a military situation and we couldn't get out of it. And, um, and you know, so we, it, it really wasn't in our control. But thank the Lord, the bishops allowed us to do it this Sunday. Amen. The ram in the bush. Amen. And so what we're going to do is um, on this morning, um, most of you, while they get set up and in position, most of you are familiar with the names of George Washington, Thomas Jefferson, uh, uh, Abraham Lincoln and uh, John F. Kennedy. And the reason you're familiar with these names is because they played a very important part in our American history. The same rings true for uh, George Washington Carver, Frederick Douglass, Rosa Parks, and Martin Luther King. You're familiar with these names because they played a very important role in our African American history. But do you not know that there are names out there that are just as important as those names, if not more important, that most of us know absolutely nothing about? Names like Mariah Woodward Eder, Amy Simple McPherson, Catherine Kuhlman, John G. Lake, A.A. A. Allen, Smith Wigglesworth, and on and on and on, Jack Cole, Evan Roberts, and on and on and on. And most of us know nothing about these names, but they're just as important, if not more important, because these names played a very important role in our Christian American history. Now, I don't know about you, but my Christian history is just as important as my African history just as important as my American history, because it encompasses all histories, amen? So, I believe the Lord has laid it upon my heart today, uh, this year, to do a series of skits. And I'm go it's going to be one every other Kingdom Sunday. And what we're going to do is we're going to showcase some of God's generals. And these were men and women of God, very highly ranked in the Spirit, that God used to usher in revival and a supernatural move of the Spirit here in the States, okay? So, the first thing that we want to do, and I think it's important that we uh, be mindful of that, and one of the things I decided to do was to turn this series beyond the Bible. Because in this day and age, it's important that we realize that God is still doing things beyond the Bible days. Amen? He's still moving. He's still delivering. He's still doing signs, wonders, and miracles. Because what happens is we have a tendency in the church to want to put God in a box. We want to regulate him. We want to uh, uh, put him in an age or a generation. But reality is, is God is bigger than that. He's bigger than that. As a matter of fact, Bishop used the word um, progressive. God goes from generation to generation, from age to age, and he's going to continue to do that until Christ's return. So it's important that we realize that because if we don't know that God is a progressive God, that the move of the Spirit is progressive, we won't believe that God is still calling people to be pastors and teachers and apostles and prophets and missionaries. If we don't believe that the move of the Spirit is progressive, we, won't, we, we really won't believe that God is still saving and delivering and setting people free. If we don't believe that the move of the Spirit is progressive, we can't believe for the supernatural. Because in our mind, we believe that it only happened in the Bible. Amen. But we all know that God is progressive and he's still moving. He's still doing things in this day. He's still doing things in my life, in your life, in your family's life. So God is progressive. Amen. Now, having said all that, this play, like I said, was the one that we were supposed to do last week. And um, to kick off the series, we're going to uh, 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 highlight a man by the name of William J. Seymour. Can you put his name? There he is. Um, I initially cho chose William J. Seymour because it was going to be in honor of African American Month. Now, just to give you guys a little bit of background about him so that you'll know how he progressed, um, I want to give you just a short background. William J. Seymour was born in 1870 in Centerville, Louisiana. His parents were recently freed slaves, which meant he was born into a world of extreme racial violence and injustice. He had no formal education, but taught himself how to read by reading the Bible. As a youth, Seymour was sensitive and high-spirited. At 25, he left the South and headed to Indianapolis where he was converted in the Methodist Church, but eventually joined the Church of God Reformation Movement where he was called to preach. While in Cincinnati, Cincinnati uh, Ohio, he wrestled with the call of God on his life and was afraid to answer. 
In the midst of his struggle, he contracted smallpox, which was usually fatal around that era, but he survived after three weeks of horrible suffering and was left with blindness in his left eye and severe facial scarring. After recovering, Seymour immediately submitted to the plan of God for his life and was ordained. The plan for his life eventually led him to Los Angeles, California, where he later founded a church called Apostolic Faith Mission. Although there are many signs, wonders, and miracles that took place at Azusa, the hallmark of his ministry was the baptism in the Holy Ghost with evidence of speaking in tongues. In the early days of Azusa Street Revival, all of the meetings were spontaneous. The music was impromptu and without the use of instruments or hymn books. But in spite of all these limitations, the supernatural moved mightily. Saints of God, can I have your attention for a second? Saints of God, can I have your attention for a second? Amen. Now these two missionaries have just received the baptism of the Holy Ghost with the evidence of speaking in tongues. Hold on now. Hold, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on now. Hold on. Now, son, if, if this is truly God, then it can stand the test. So go ahead and speak in tongues. So I'm letting you go and tarry for a little bit longer. It didn't quite take. Everybody point your hand this way and say, fix it, Jesus. Fix it, Jesus. All right, sister, go ahead and speak in tongues. Glory to God. Amen. 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 And the church says, Amen. Now, isn't that a wonderful thing that just happened? Glory to God. Now, now, some of you may be wondering what's going on here at 312 Azusa Street. Well, let me break it down for you. See, before Pentecost, the disciples were filled with the unction of the Holy Spirit that sustained them until they received the Holy Ghost baptism. Now, now many people today are filled with joy and gladness, but they are far from the endowment of power. You see, sanctification brings rest, sweetness, and quietness to our souls. For we are one with the Lord Jesus and are able to obey his command that, that man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. So let us therefore wait for the promises of our Father upon our soul. According to Jesus' word, John truly baptized in water. But ye shall receive the Holy Ghost not many days hence. And ye shall be receive power when the Holy Ghost comes upon you. And ye shall be witnesses unto me 
in both Jerusalem and all of Judea and unto Samaria and into all the uttermost parts of the earth. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Oh, worship, get down on your knees and ask the Lord to come in and you will find him at your heart's door and he will come in with power and fire. Prove him now. Amen. I can't hear you, saints. Amen. Sister, why don't you tell me what God has done for you? Oh, Reverend. Reverend. When I came here tonight, I felt so down. I told the Lord, God, I need you to show me a sign. I said, if you don't do something for me, I didn't know what I was going to do. And in the prayer room, yes, yes, yes. he just baptized me with the Holy Ghost. See, sister, you're a lot like me. Okay. There's a lot of manifestations I see among God's people that I don't particularly like myself. But you know, when the Holy Spirit comes upon me, I actually find myself enjoying it. Hmm. Now, if you want, you can go into the prayer room and you can pray for the baptism of the Holy Ghost. And when it happens, you don't have to jump, shout, or, or anything. Just be yourself. Indeed, Reverend, I would do just that. Right. Joy bells keep ringing in my soul. Joy bells keep ringing in my soul. Joy bells keep ringing in my soul. Joy bells, joy bells, joy bells keep ringing in my soul. One more time, joy bells keep ringing in my soul. Joy bells keep ringing in my soul. Joy. There's a fire. Continue to pray, saints. Continue to pray. Are you the man in trouble? Yes, sir. What's the meaning of this interruption? The building's on fire. We got to get everybody out. On fire. On fire. Yes, sir, Pastor. Yes, sir. There's fire on this building. I saw fire on this building miles away in my house. I was looking. Well, Sister Jenkins, that's mighty neighborly oh, thank you, pal. Thank of you. Oh, my God. Uh, but I can assure you, this, this building isn't on fire. Well, Pastor, I don't understand. Me and my family saw flames on this building. This here building? Yes, sir, this what? building right here. I know it when I see it. You know, I don't smell no smoke. You mind if I go check out back? Not at all. All right, Hold thank up. you. Hold up, I'm going to go with you because I know what I saw. Oh, God. 
of you now. <laughs> Reverend, it may not be, but my soul feels good on yeah! today. Yeah! It's just like fire shut up in my bones. Yeah! It's like fire. It's like fire. It's like fire. It's like fire. It's like Fire, fire, holy ghost, fire, 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 holy ghost, fire, holy ghost, fire, 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 I don't think there's fire in this building. I wouldn't say there isn't a fire. Huh? Well, hold, hold up, wait a minute. I know what I saw. I saw fire on this building. Now you mean to tell me that this building is not on fire? I, what is going on up in here? That's what I want to know. You know what it is? What is that? It's the fire of the Holy Ghost. It's like fire, 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 fire. Fire, fire, Holy Ghost, fire, 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 Holy Ghost, fire, 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 bring it down, fire, fire, bring it up now, fire, 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 fire. Can you guys imagine that? Can you imagine if every Sunday, on every building that named the name of Jesus, we see flames on the roof? Can you imagine in every home that we say that we're Christians in, our roofs would be on fire? Can you imagine if in the White House, the flames were on the White House because the cabinet, the, 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 his advisors, the, the, the House and the Senate all was, uh, was following after the Lord. And so the, there would be so much in, in passion for God, so much intensity for God, for God, that there would be fire all over this, this country. Can you imagine that? Amen. In those days, those early days and in those humble beginnings, the Pentecostal message was spread around the world as pastors and teachers and evangelists, missionaries and laymen came by thousands from near and from far to be a part of the great Azusa Street Revival. On September 28, 1922, Daddy Seymour, as he was called, died of a heart attack and went to be with the Lord. But his legacy still remains, as many ministries still have some, if not all, of their Pentecostal influence from the Azusa Street Revival. Life magazine listed Azusa Street as one of the top 100 events of the millennium. Christian History magazine named William J. Seymour one of the top Christians of the 20th century. William J. Seymour, an ordinary black man from South Louisiana whom God used mightily to spread the Holy Ghost, to spread the a supernatural working of God beyond the Bible. Amen. <laughs> 